Wait, what? No, I don't have this plant already. This is a totally new plant in my collection. I don't have three. Just this, this one that I need now. Yeah. Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel if you are new here. My name is Jacqueline. This is my jungle. If you're not new here, thank you for coming back. Even though you know by now that, you know, things get weird sometimes. <laughs> I appreciate you for being here. Whether you're new or not, if you are new, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the weird stuff that goes on here. So, Basically, today, you know, I wanted to talk about this thing that we tend to do as plant parents and don't act like you don't do this, okay? I see you out there. You're in the store, you see a big beautiful plant and you're like, wow, I really love that plant. And then whoever you're with, maybe it's your partner, your friend, your parent, whoever, they're like, don't you already have that one? And you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. But yes, yes I do, and this one's cuter, so obviously I need this one too, right? So if you haven't caught on, today I'm going to be talking to you about plants that I love so much that I just can't say no. When I see them in the store, I gotta buy another one. When you find a big, beautiful plant that's one of your favorite plants, you have a really hard time walking away from it, even if you already have one at home. So I can't even tell you how many times I've had a small plant of something and then found a big, lush, beautiful one and felt the need to take that home too, or I have a big, lush, beautiful one and feel the need to take home a cute little baby one as well. It's fine. So today I wanted to have a little bit of fun with you guys and open up the conversation about plants that we love so much that we have multiples like sometimes not just two, three, four of the same plant. And that's fine. Absolutely, totally fine. That's something that I love about the fact that they have different varieties to offer as well. So even though I have like three Syndapsis exotica plants, I can always find the Splash. I have the Jade. You know what I mean? There's lots of similar plants that you can find essentially so if you hadn't um, picked up on it yet this is one of my favorite plants in my collection period I love this plant she has the most beautiful big thick silvery leaves and I bought her in this container she's wet um for 20 bucks she was not trailing at all when I bought her so she's definitely grown since she's kind of growing a little all over the place because she's getting light from like multiple different directions so her leaves don't really know which way they want to turn but she's absolutely stunning so when I saw this one in Home Depot for $12.98 I couldn't say no I mean, they look different, right? <laughs> but this was such a good price for this hanging basket that I couldn't say no. And I very rarely see these offered in the big box store, especially not in a massive hanging basket for $12. Like, tell me you would not have bought this plant for $12. Okay? Yeah. This one was much smaller when I purchased this one and this one is getting different lighting conditions you could tell the leaves are darker and more silvery and this one's not getting as much light they're a little bit paler and they're not really coming in as big but they're both still beautiful and i love them so first plant on the list is the syndapsis pictus exotica if this isn't one of your favorite plants though then like I, who doesn't love this plant come on Next on the list, you guys already saw me hold up my cute little baby Sable Blue that I picked up recently from Rose Hill Nursery in Rochelle 
for 18 is just too stinking cute not to. I wanted one that I can like grow up on a pole and see if I can get it to get big and fenestrated, but I also have this one right here that I can't take down. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's huge. It's in one of the big hanging baskets from Costa Farms and I've had it for years. I just continue to chop her and she just keeps getting bushier from the top. She doesn't get a ton of light over there, so she's not super blue silvery color so I'm hoping that this one I can put in different conditions and get it to start climbing up something soon so that we can have a trailing one and a climbing one you feel me I mean I could have propagated that one into this one but I usually cut it and give them to people or sell them so I do have some up on my Etsy right now that I um I'm trying to get rid of. <laughs> Once they establish, they take off like crazy. So definitely a plant that you can feel confident buying as a small plant as long as it's established and not worrying about it growing into a big, beautiful, lush plant. These do tend to be straggly though, just as a plant, it's a straggly plant. So I like to cut it back pretty frequently and you'll just get more growth from the top. So that is my Epipremnum Panatum Cebu Blue. It's not blue, but it's also like more blue compared to green plants. You feel me? The third plant on my list, you guys would have seen me repot recently. I'll leave it here. I had like three of them <laughs> that I repotted all up into this big pot right here. So this is my philodendron micans. I figured I'd give you a little bit of an update on how she's looking. I did finally give her a trim, but she's still growing like crazy. Apparently, I gotta cut these too. But since cutting her, she's been putting out lots of new growth from the top, like I anticipated and hoped for, and she's just beautiful. Like, do you see this plant, you guys? She's a stunner for sure. I am obviously obsessed with her, that's why I had three, and I potted them all up into this one big pot. I don't mind that she's bare on this side because we don't see that side, but look at those undersides. They're so red and pretty. So that's her, three separate plants that I had that I finally potted all up into one. I don't feel the need to have this one climbing to get really big because I have the philodendron melanochrysum that I'm gonna grow up on a pole plus I really love the way she looks trailing so I'd say that was justified and I keep buying more and that's the sad part I have another one in there for my friend Adina and I see them really frequently so if you guys are looking I have them I have plenty there's a bunch of propagating I have a bunch of starter plants that are ready to go up on Etsy and just have to like actually photograph them and put them up there so keep your eyes open for that favorite the shop the link is down below so that you don't miss it when i do restock i also always post it on my instagram stories so you can put your notifications on for that as well if you go follow me on instagram at jacqueline's jungle same as here just with a period in between jacqueline's and jungle separated out it makes it easier to read in my opinion and if you turn your notifications on here obviously as well you'll get notified when I post to my community page about it so if you check all those boxes you will not miss it when I upload and usually Instagram is the best way to go because I'll let you know a day or two ahead of time that I'm getting ready to restock Etsy so you can keep your eye out for that so. fill it under in my skins. absolutely love her Definitely recommend putting her on your wish list if you haven't done so, if I haven't convinced you yet, because it's just a big velvety, beautiful curtain of plant. Next plant on my list, I'm only going to show you one of this one because the other two are in the greenhouse and I just really don't feel like dragging them out right now, but trust me, I have two other massive plants of this one. This is just my personal one that I keep in my bedroom because she's smaller. She's so cute. This is my Hoya Chelsea. She's not super cuppy or dimply just yet, but that's okay. The other ones that I have in my greenhouse are, this was my first one that I picked up at, actually David bought this one for me 
a while back at McNaughton's in New Jersey. Love that place. Can't wait to go back soon. And then shortly thereafter, as usual, I found some big hanging baskets in Home Depot. So I found them on multiple occasions. So I have two of the large ones because they were just sitting there and nobody was buying them. And I was like, what is wrong with you people? So there's underappreciation for Hoya around here apparently. And I don't really know why. So I brought them home. And those are the plants that I take my cuttings from and propagate. So if you want some Hoya Chelsea, your girl always has, literally always has some propagating. David has a big, huge, massive plant of this at his place too. That is stunning. I repotted it for him into one of my favorite pots and it's probably my favorite plant that he has on his shelves. So definitely stay tuned for a full on houseplant tour of his plants. We are planning on doing that soon. Hoya Chelsea, Hoya that I love so much that I have way too much of it. I need to cut this one. It's kind of bothering me that there's this long stem with nothing on it. So in the spirit of talking about Hoyas that I love so much that I have multiples, I guess I might as well take down this Curtisii for you. So I've had this one for probably about two years now and I've continuously trimmed her so that she is really full on top like really full this is a lot of plant i don't know if you can tell but this is like a lot a lot of plant up here and she's just got like a few that are growing long finally but i tend to propagate mostly from this plant and then i have let me get rid of this bertonia i have lots of plants hanging off of other plants and then i picked this one up maybe about a year ago just because it was so long and trailing but you could tell it is much more bare on top because I'm not cutting it back the way that I'm cutting this one back this one gets way more Sun too you could see it's sun stressed and kind of pink and this one's more green and not sun stressed they're in the same window they're just the way that it's angled this one gets more light consistently throughout the day that's that. I love Hoya Curtisii. It's one of my favorite Hoyas. I highly recommend it. I have a hard time propagating this for you guys. I'm trying a different method now, so hopefully I will have some of that available very soon as soon as I have sorted out how to get it to root without rotting it. This is one that I definitely take a lot of cuttings from and send it off to other people, so hopefully they've had success rooting it, but I have not quite yet. Some of them do, some of them, but most of them just rot. So I'm going to try a different method this time around and hopefully that'll work a little bit better. So if you're interested in seeing that, I can definitely film that for you and uh, let you know how to propagate this finicky little guy. So a lot of people have a hard time starting that one up and getting it going from a cutting and next on my list I have string of turtles oh just lost the leaf shocking so this is my string of turtles that I keep in my bedroom she's like okay I guess she looks like she's getting too much light on top but she's definitely growing really long down here I might just have to pull her back from the grow light a little bit because she's getting kind of like bleached up here but I have another one of these in my greenhouse that is like huge and lush and overflowing. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with it to be honest with you. But for now it's living in the greenhouse and maybe eventually I'll pop them all up into one. But for now I have two because I could have just, I can't resist them when I find them. I think this little one was like $12. Picked it up at like 14th Street in Jersey a while back. Don't ask me how I remember these things without looking at the pots, but um, I can barely remember my name most days and how old I am, but I remember where I bought this plant when and how much I paid for it. I don't have control over what my brain holds on to and what it lets go of, you guys, I'm sorry. So, String of Turtles is definitely on the list of plants that I think are just so dang cute that I can't resist when I find one for a good price. I'm sure there's lots more 
that I'm missing, but the last one that I'm going to cover today is probably not surprising to any of you who watch my videos regularly. I found I found this big massive hanging basket in Home Depot a little while ago. I'll leave that video for you guys here. And we still don't know if it's an Adansonii or an Acuminata. I'm thinking maybe there's like subspecies of Adansonii that just haven't necessarily been named or identified properly in like a scientific way. But it definitely looks different and has a different growth pattern than my other Adansonii's. So the hell do I know? I show you guys the one that I have growing up here on the pole a lot. So I figured I'd show you this other one that I have because I have one, two, three, four, four, five, like five of these. Anyway, it's fine. It's probably my favorite plant aside from the exotica and the micans like this this is one of my favorite plants i love the fenestrations on it like this is just a stunning plant this one's still in its original nursery container from michael's i got this for 15. it's died back a little bit but now it's putting out some new growth and she lives over in my more like western facing window and she seems pretty happy there she's getting big and more fennies and then I have this one that I show you guys all the time. I figured I'd give you a little update on her because she is putting out new leaves at the top here. So she's definitely happier and bouncing back from the thrips. I don't see any. I haven't seen any on this plant in a while. I do spray it pretty frequently. It does still have some damaged leaves down here. But the new ones are coming in. These are all new up here. And they're coming in really nice. So I'm not mad about it. I have another cutting of this over here. Can you tell the difference between this leaf and this leaf? We went over this in my video before. This is the newest leaf on my Adansonii and this is one of the newer leaves on the mystery Monstera. So very very subtle differences in these two leaves that you can tell even though this one came in darker it still kind of has like a lighter green feel to it than this one does and i think that's just purely because of the finish on it is like more matted and this one is shinier and this one's just flatter so the light reflects off of it differently and i think that's why it appears darker but it's not necessarily darker the Adansonii tend to get like a brighter green when given certain conditions as well, so it can be hard to tell. But please tell me that those don't look like two different plants right here. This one's definitely wrinklier and shinier. This one almost looks like somebody took a flat iron to it, like where the wrinkles should be. They're not like where the veins are. It's not quite as wrinkly. Does that make sense? Anyway, so this is the Adansonii cutting here that I have rooted in water. This is the not in Adansonii cutting that I have <laughs> rooting in water. And this one I am going to pot up with this one very soon before the roots get too big to fit in here. I might have to just up pot this all together, but I want to have them all on the same pole just to kind of fill this out a little bit more so we'll show you guys this big one that i picked up at home depot so this growth pattern is different than any of my other adansonii's these stems are are thick and the internodes are really long and the leaves just they come in look at how much rounder and heart shaped that is compared to the other ones and i don't know what it is about this plant it's like when they mature like this somebody took a flat iron to them and like flattened them out they're not as wrinkly as a regular adansonii so 
the jury is still out on whether or not this is a Monstera cuminata or if it's just some sort of subspecies of the Adansonii that I'm not aware of. If you guys have an opinion about it, feel free to leave it in the comments below in a polite manner. Look at how fenestrated that one is. Ooh, girl, fennies on fennies. You get it. All right, last but not least, we have this other mystery Adansonii that I picked up at Home Depot a while back that kind of has the same vibe to it. Like the leaves look darker and flatter and they're like kind of velvety. And girl, she's, she's a big, she's big. So yeah, I like Adansonii or pretty much any Monstera that looks like Adansonii. So I'm not mad about having multiples of this plant. This one was definitely a rescue mission looking super sad. I think I paid like $12 for her because it's grown locally. It's not a Costa Farms plant. So Ooh, she needs a trim. Once I cut her, she'll fill in up top a little bit but for right now I don't really have anywhere I don't have anywhere to put the propagations I have to get rid of the ones that I already have so those will be in my Etsy soon as well I did cut this one up so I don't know if it's an Adansonii it could be something different I'm going to list it as an Adansonii because I don't want to mislead anybody but if you're interested in having this to take it home and compare it to an Adansonia that you already have. It will be in my shop. So do these look like two different plants to you? Because they look like two different plants to me. Just saying. And this one. Do they not look like two uh two different plants to you? Because they look like two different plants to me. <laughs> it's fine. Everything is fine. So the only other plant that I didn't mention is my Monstera Silt Bacana. I have two of those. That's one of my favorite plants as well. She's really straggly, so I'm probably gonna pot this one's not, the other one is. So I'm probably gonna pot them up together. They got hit pretty badly with the thrips, but they're bouncing back. She's got lots of new growth coming in on her, and she's finally starting to look lush again so this is also one of my favorite plants that i have a hard time not buying multiples of the only reason why i don't buy more of this plant is because she is a little bit finicky she does grow pretty straggly she's kind of a pain in the ass i'm not gonna lie to you she's one of the ones like the cebu blue that just grows straggly so you gotta keep cutting her if you want her to be a trailing plant anyway i am gonna take some cuttings and try to get them to climb and get bigger and get fenestrated because it is a monstera but for now this be what she looks like and i have another one here but this one's not looking so great <laughs> so we're probably going to take this out of here and add it into this pot here but here is another plant that i love so much that i just if i see it especially in a big box store because this was only $16.98. I definitely pick them up. But I'm seeing them pop up in the nurseries a lot more. You're not going to find a big one for $16.98. You'll probably be paying like $50, $60 for this. But you can find a little one for like $20 bucks as well. So just keep your eyes open for that. And if you guys are interested, I am doing a giveaway soon because we're almost at 5 k you guys it's really exciting definitely share my channel with all your planty friends get them to come on over so we can get to 5k faster and do a giveaway and let me know what plants you guys have been looking for if you've been seeing them in my plant shopping videos I will go and find them for you bring them back do a giveaway I want to do a big one this time multiple plants so definitely let me know in the comments below what you're looking for okay okay so that is it for this video you guys I hope that you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me like I said we're doing a giveaway Etsy restocks all that stuff don't want to miss it go follow me on Instagram as well so you don't miss any of the day-to-day -day updates and other little things that I like to post there and yeah if you made it to the end of this video leave me 
multiple plant emojis <laughs> in honor of multiples. You feel me? Just leave me all the plant emojis, like a bunch of them, as many as you want. Type them all out, girl. I love it when you guys just leave me really long, obnoxious comments. <laughs> I hope that you really enjoyed this and you like content like this. I am happy to talk more about the plants that I love and just be able to like show them off is fun for me. So yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>